Okay, so today we are spectating Rebel 1478. He's playing Yasuo mid. This is a bronze game. He's playing Yasuo against Annie, which I personally believe is a pretty decent matchup for Yasuo since you get to spell, uh, since you get to windwall her Qs, which she does a lot of CSing with her Qs and a lot of her primary damage from her Qs, and you can use your E to dodge her W. Um, tip resist obviously is still a problem, but once you get past the stun, you can actually probably fairly often use the tippers to um, go through it with uh, Sweeping Blade. I haven't played Yasuo for a little while, so I don't remember what all of his abilities name is, ability names are anymore. Okay, so the first thing is you start four pots and boots. Uh, in this matchup, I really wouldn't want to start boots. I probably wouldn't start boots on Yasuo against much at all. Maybe, maybe a matchup where you have inherent power over them and you're not expecting to get uh, harassed at all. I would have started Dorn Shield and a pot. Dorn Shields be a lot better because it's going to block a lot more damage because of her auto attack range, so she's going to try and harass you a lot. Her It blocks damage from her Q since it's a single target ability. And it might prevent damage from her E. Not entirely sure on that interaction. But she's... Annie's going to try to do a lot of harassing. At least I hope so. Harassing with auto attacks and being able to block 8 damage from that, it's going to be worth more than boots, in my opinion. Uh, so, one tip about playing Yasuo in low elo is that you probably shouldn't do it. I don't play Yasuo at all. I, I've had a few good games on it, but he's not. It's not something I'd played in ranked. So the main thing is that you want to get CS. Because this Annie's going to try and beat you up, so she's going to be stronger than you for a long time unless she burns a knight like that for some reason. I, I, I don't know. That was bad. That was really bad. But at least you have your health bot ticking. Uh, let's see, this, these other matchups, they have a Wukong jungle, which Wukong's... It's too bad you don't have one on your team for the wombo combo. See, you can see that Annie had her stun up, so I don't think it was a good idea to go in like that. I would much rather have just waited it out. Try and, like, prevent, like, any damage at all. She started Dorn's ring and two bots. So she's going to have less sustain than you. So you can just wait out her stun, make her use it as a spell to try and see us. That, that Q is a, it's a bit wide there. The biggest thing is to just focus on getting CS. Kills her second. I'm gonna climb, get good at CSing. That was quite an interesting flash from Annie. But you, you gotta time your your E's and Q's better. You you have to make sure that they last hit if you're gonna use them like that. Because you're missing a lot of CS. Using your tornado Q to uh, to harass is just fine. That uh, Wukong's doing nothing. Yeah, good you didn't burn your flash. Now, especially something against something like a Wukong jungle who does a lot of damage, I think it's a lot better to take Exhaust on Yasuo than Ignite. Because with Exhaust, you get to 2v1 pretty well. And especially if like someone like Wukong would come in for a gank or you see any moving towards you to try and like tibbers you post six you can just exhaust her and save yourself a lot of damage and quite possibly kill them see 
you like that? Right there, you blew a flash that you didn't need to blow at all. So we're going to slow this down a little bit. You see that she's 6. She sees is done. So she does all that. As soon as you get unstun, as soon as you see that ignite on you, don't even bother flashing because it's going to kill you anyway. You could have saved your flash, and then you'd have it up for a gank later. This. Back to lane. I right, bought a zeal. Um, you see, normally where you'd have a Doran shield instead of these boots, you could get in, instead of getting a zeal, you could get an Avarice blade, and I th think that you should have gotten an Avarice blade instead. All right. Alright, let's see how much gold you have. Alright, you have... What? I'm looking at the wrong one. Okay, you have 1300 gold. So, you can buy an Avarice Blade, which is 800 gold, and then you have 500 gold left over. So you can get yourself a Null Magic Mantle. And then wait, like, a couple seconds to get a Health Pot. So you could get Avarice Blade and Null Magic Mantle, and that would help a lot. Like, don't be afraid to build defensively. Even on someone like Yasuo. Because if you just survive a little bit longer than them, and you get another spell rotation up, since his cooldowns are really short, especially his Q, it would probably be better to win to do that and actually win the fight, then dealing a little tiny bit more damage with a zeal over uh, Avarice Blade. So now Wukong comes in for a gank. He's somehow still only level 4. You should definitely win this. If you had Exhaust, you could see it. Annie was coming Exhaust her, and you could kill that Wukong. So, your trinket's still up. So, he's come from top brush twice so far to gank you. So what you want to do is, since that seems to be the direction that he's coming from the most, just ward it. What? Yeah. What? 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 Stop. Hold on. Hammer time. Go back. All right. Alright, last hang on your tower. It's pretty simple. Especially on a melee champion like Yasuo who has a very, very easy attack animation. So, last hitting under tower. Melee minions. Two, two tower hits, and then one auto attack will kill them. So you let the tower hit them twice, and then you attack them. And then you get the gold. Ranged minions. Auto attack. Tower shot, auto attack, and you get them. Let's play this back a little bit slower. Okay, there's that. Cue it. Cue it. Oh, your Q's down. Okay, you should have just auto and eed. And then you missed that one. You missed like four CS out of like five right there. And you could have got you could have gotten it all. All right, so. You auto-attacked it first, or you queued it first, for some reason. That was a queue, right? Yeah, that was a queue. So instead you should let the tower hit it, and then you could queue auto. And then while the tower's prepping and firing at this one, your queue would be back up, and then you could queue auto if you need to. So you missed that one CS. This one, tower hits it. All right, auto attack. All right, you have 87, 80. This has 124. So instead of eing over here, you auto attack and you e it, and then you get that CS. But you e over to this one. You get that one. 
then you E that one. If you would have just autoed first and then E, you would have gotten it. You should have also E to this one. And then you would have gotten it. So this thing is really important. You missed like almost an entire wave right there just from that. Yeah. Don't don't even bother using your health pot, just just back. Just back. You know her flash is back up, she can like and her auto attack range is really high, so she just needs to stay like near you. Auto you wants to take your shield down and then QW and you're dead. But she didn't do that. So Shaku comes in for a gank, you're a bit behind. Alright, that was that was alright. That was alright. Just get the CS. Okay, good. I get some damage on this tower. If Wukong comes, instead of going that way, what you could have done instead of doing that is, you know Annie's dead. Okay, you can see their bot lane down here. You know the bot lane's down here. But what's the second health bar? I don't know. But you can pretty much surmise that Mordekaiser isn't doing anything. He doesn't have teleport. He's not walking down mid lane, right? So, so instead of that, as soon as you see Wukong come around over here, it was good to E through that, but you could have died. You're dying here. Instead, you E through here and you walk up. And you go out through here. You go out through his jungle. You have made it out. Like, as soon as you saw him, if you started eating this way, he's he's never going to expect you to run further into their territory. He's going to be like, well, he's going to come back out this way, and that's why he walked around towards this way. So you, you E twice through here, and you just walk up through here. He doesn't have the speed to do that. He doesn't have boots. He was out of range of smite, too. So you would have lived, you would have gotten out completely fine that way. Which is, it, it's one of those Yasuo things that most other champions can't do. It's just like, you E through the enemy minion wave to escape a gank. Like, as long as the tower isn't on you already, you'll get out. That's what we do this. Alright, now you have the Avarice Blade. Oh, what the? Didn't go back. Okay, uh, let, let's jump that back a second here. Alright, another thing about Avarice Blade is it, actually, it gives you the same combat sets, essentially, as Zeal does. Because you want that crit strike chance. That's the, that's the main combat stat. Attack speed is nice because it does lower your Q cooldown. But it costs less and it gives you more gold. So, alright, we're going back to lane here. Oh, just make sure you're last at that. Just find trade. Can't really do anything. Alright, alright, we're gonna we're gonna jump back here. Okay, here's the thing. You don't want to alt instantly, especially because you know that. Point it back slowly enough. Where is it? Oh, it was too far back. That was too far back. What the? Or did I go forward? Holy shit, I went forward, didn't I? How did I manage to do that? That doesn't make sense. Alright. Alright, so you see Wukong running down here. You know he has blue buff. You, you saw him with blue buff. Alright. So, now your shake goes down here. So you're going to converge on him. Alright? It's great. Now, as you can see, he has stopped moving, and his blue buff is gone. So you know this is a clone. That's the thing about, like, Champions like Shaco 
when, when he like splits up like that, when he alts, you can tell which one is the real one by if they have buffs or not. This, this Shaco has... I think he's got double buffs. Yeah, he's got double buffs. So, when this animation is done, this Wukong's going to know that this is the real Shaco because this one still has the buffs on him. Clones do not have buffs on them, so these two are both clones. So that's something you got to keep in mind. I mean, you almost got him with the tornado, though, actually, which is kind of sad <laughs> that he walked back into it. But y you also wasted your all on his clone. No, I guess he lost the blue up now. But you pick up a kill. It's not too bad. This cooldown's pretty short. Go back to this Yasuo. Oh my god. Alright. So yeah, just get these. Just get the CS. Oh, you missed that one. Okay, you got that one, though. Use that. You still, you still have that that ward. Oh, you missed the cannon minion. Cannot do that. Oh, that was good. Let's get the CS. Yep. That wind wall was way too slow. Alright, that was a good call, go and dope up. Get that kill. Help them help them push the tower. You'll probably push bot tower up. Alright. There's a better wind wall. Time for the last one. All right, so you still have this ward in your inventory. You still have this ward. Still have it. Drink through that, and then warded this one up here. Man, it's good that you bought a ward. You gotta use them. Good. Peek through the wall. You don't need blue buff. Blue buff does not help you. It reduces your alt cooldown. So, let's jump back here a second. Alright. So, good move, ing through the wall. That was good. Alright. Get Procky Q on that. E through. Alright, that's a dead Wukong. So thing about Yasuo is he doesn't scale very well with CDR, which is why no one built CDR on him. Because his Q his Q cooldown gets shorter with attack speed. And this just gets shorter by leveling it up. It's got 0.3 second cooldown, so even if you have 40%, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. His wind wall and his ult are the only things that are actually affected by cooldown reduction. Andy comes in, you know, drop a bear on your heads. Yeah. So as soon as you saw Annie come in, or you could have done you could have just like eat straight out through him and just left. You have your flash too, you eat through Mordecai's your flash over the wall and you're out. Don't win wall against Mordekaiser, it blocks nothing. Yukon super weak. Alright, let's let's jump back real quick. Alright. See, now if you would have saved your wind wall instead of using it on Mordekaiser, you could have wind walled her her Q. Alright. 
to have windwalled her, or not her Q, her, uh, her auto. Duh. And then you could maybe have gotten away. And so you still have your flash up. So you might have still been able to get away from Mordekaiser. Alright, so just push this wave out. You can see three of them are bot, and then you see Vayne over here. So the only one that's missing is Wukong, and you know that you can kill him anyway, so you can just push this up. Still bot. You can see that they're all still bot, except for Wukong. So you just take this out. Uh, here comes Wukong, so just kill him. Yep. Another thing is, if since you have Ignite, well, you could have you could have ignited him before he cloned, and then you can see the clone, or you can still see him even with the clone out. So instead of trying to get fancy there with that CSing like that, it would have been better to just auto attack and queue them as quickly as possible, just to move it as fast as possible. So now you know Vane's missing from there. Here she comes. Hit that wind wall. All right. Yep, just back out of there. It's red sewn up, so just back. Alright, how much gold do you have? You've got 1300 gold. Okay, so you did complete your stack shave, you gotta be up sword. Alright. Now, against this team, the Wukong is basically worthless. He doesn't exist in this game. So against the Annie and the Mordekaiser, instead of getting a BF sword, I would probably get a Hex Drinker and get a Maw of Valmordius first. Just because it adds more stats that you... more defensive stats that help with your shield. And it helps you survive a burst, which a BF sword does not. Quite possibly halted that. I didn't see if it hit Annie or not. Just want to see if it hits her. Okay, it did not. Kind of looked like it did, but that was just from the angle. If that would have hit Annie, I would have been like, definitely go in, because you can definitely kill her with with Varus there helping. And then the rest of them kind of just fall apart. Well, except for Mordekaiser. Eh, Mord's 5-0. Wow. So, just push it up. It was a bit close. You should have windwalled before that. Like you could just like, as soon as you started attacking the turret, I would have windwalled. And then if they start to try a position around it, then you can get out. Alright. Well, what you could do is you could split push bot right there. That's what I would have done. I would have gone bot. You see, this is a this is a big wave. This is a nice juicy wave. Look at all that gold. Look at all that gold. You've gotten all that gold. Uh, have you finished your Infinity Edge? Uh, it's it's all right. I would have rather have had a Maw Malmordius just to survive the burst damage because Annie, she stuns you, and then does her entire rotation, and then you're dead. Maw Malmordius, you'd survive it because of the shield. Pink, that's good. So 
I'm not doing too much right now. You could have taken the Scuttle Crab there. You've got a knockup to reduce its armor. But yeah, all right, split push bot. That's good. That's good. Terror Comb for Dragon. So since you have that pink ward, and you know Dragon's going to be up soon, I will just save them for the pit and make sure that they don't have any wards. Well, you can get this tower. It's not worth it to dive an Alistair like that. You're not going to kill him. So you got a Vamp Scepter, yeah, build a Bloodthirster or a Bork. Be good. Probably a Bloodthirster since their only tank is Alistair, so Bork wouldn't be that great. But the slow is really nice on Yasuo. As soon as you saw her flash, you should have Windwalled. Windwalled and then get out of there. Get on that Mordekaiser. There you go. Yeah. Right, good ult from Shen there. And then you can just push down this tower. And this is. You get the inhib too. Oh, oh definitely now. Oh, yeah, that inhib's gone. Alright. So, Vayne's dead. You can get Baron right now. Or they can surrender. Alright. So, yeah, Annie's a pretty good matchup for Yasuo. Um, CSing, definitely need to, definitely need to work on that. And we're just lasting under tower for the melee minions. Just two tower shots, one auto. And then range minions are auto, tower shot, auto. And then you get them. Even, even like, supports can last it under tower like that. Sometimes they need to use a spell for the melee minions, but ranged minions, it's pretty much locked in for every champion. It's just auto tower auto. So yeah, that's pretty much it for that game. Just remember some of those tips like aiming through the enemy minion wave to get away from ganks, especially if they're if you can see that they're like moving around to try and get behind you. Uh, it's one of the things that you also you can just E through the minion wave to get out. That's the thing that a lot of people don't expect. Um, since Annie got the first blood on you, I think that you definitely should have gone Avarice Blade and gotten a Null Magic Mantle instead of just getting a Zeal. Because that would help you a lot more and make you really, really dominant in lane. That's about all for this one. Uh, games where you win pretty easily aren't the best to do reviews of, since there's usually not that much to review. Um, but yeah, that's what I got for this one.